These are the so-called Magdeburg hemispheres. They're uh, just cast iron hemispheres that mate together. And there's a little bit of wax in here that allows them to seal very well together. And what we're going to do is uh, evacuate the region in between these hemispheres and then see how hard they, hard they are to pull apart. Give it about 20 seconds, so just imagine the air being sucked out of there. Okay, I'm going to close off the valve now, turn off the vacuum pump, remove the hose, and then uh, let me invite uh, for his cameo appearance, David Evans, to use his muscular strength to pull these apart. Exactly. Well, you want to try it yourself? Sure. Well, you want to demonstrate. Okay. Okay, you want to lean back a little bit more? Maybe we can do it. <laughs> okay, no go. All right, but if you're really, uh, strong like me, you can take them apart. And if you release the, uh, the air from the interior. So how does it work? We have uh, hemispheres that are about, thank you, David. Um, we have hemispheres that are about five centimeters in, in radius. And um, the cross-sectional area of this disc where they mate together um, so I'm talk talking about not the area of the outside of the sphere, but the area of this flat disk where they mate together. It's just pi r squared. And um, the pressure, when, when you evacuate these hemispheres, the pressure will be low here. And outside we'll have atmospheric pressure pushing in from all directions, which holds the hemispheres together. But some of that force is not directed in the direction we were trying to pull. We're trying to pull them apart this way. And so the area that's pertinent here in order to find the actual force required to pull them apart is this cross-sectional area, which is uh, perpendicular to the direction that we were pulling. So the force needed to apply, assuming that the, the pressure was zero inside, which it wasn't quite, but it'll be close to zero, um, will be the pressure outside. We're going to have to overcome that pressure of the outside pushing in times this uh, cross-sectional area. Uh, outside is 1.01 times 10 to the fifth pascals, newtons per square meter. If you convert that into pounds per square inch, it's about 14.7 pounds per square inch for atmospheric pressure. There's the pi for the area. Here's the radius, and we have to square it and convert it to inches and, and square the conversion factor as well. Plug the numbers in, you get about 180 pounds. So if David would just work out a little bit more, then, then maybe he'd be able to pull it off. I think basically, I don't know which which lift, uh, uh, that's not a fly, I don't think. That's something else, David. You'll have to, you have to work on that. 